On this edition of Murray County Now, the Southern Fried 5K is getting ready to step off in September. Tennessee Home Garden and Design illuminates some options for your outdoor lighting. Adam Southern gives us a brief history over some past elections for historic Murray County. And finally, a local Girl Scout has created an app for about downtown Columbia. All this and more on this edition of Murray County Now. Hello and welcome to Murray County Now, Columbia and Murray County's news show covering the events, ideas, groups, and happenings in and around Murray County. With fried food usually comes some sort of unhealthy regret, but for participants in the Southern Fried 5K, those indulgences can be rewarding. We spoke to Wes Bryant about the 5K and how to get in on the race line fun. Hi, I'm Wesley Bryant. I'm a member of the Well Sunday School class at First United Methodist Church. Here to talk about the Southern Fried 5K and One Mile Fun Run. Um, this is our fourth year to do this race. Um, we actually, when we first started the Well Sunday School class four years ago, we decided that we wanted to be participating part of the community and try to be a positive influence in the community. And a couple of our members are avid runners, and they thought well, the best way to do that is to juxtapose a 5K with the Southern Fried Festival that was going on downtown. And so we just started the race. Um, the race is a certified course, chip timed. Um, it starts here near the church and then goes through historic downtown Columbia towards Woodland Park. It loops around Woodland Park and comes back here. Um, it's what we call a um, rigorous course, but it's a fun and it's a scenic course. Um, the race starts at 8. After the race begins, about 10 minutes later, we'll start the family fun run. Um, the family fun run or walk is really a mile course that just goes through the downtown portion of Columbia and comes back to the um, church. I think our partnership with the Southern Fried Festival has been a um, key for our success. Um, we've gained registrants every year we've done it and we anticipate having over 200 this year. This year we're benefiting CASA which is Court Appointed Special Advocates. They are, for lack of a better term, a guardian ad litem group that goes into the juvenile courts where there is issues of dependency, neglect and abuse and they, better than a guardian ad litem in that they maintain a relationship with the minor throughout the whole process and beyond and they'll also report to the courts on the issues that are pertaining to that particular child and being more than just the legal issues, also the social um, problems that the child is having through school and things of that nature. Generally speaking, most 5Ks have a fun run and when we first started the fun run, we didn't think too much about it. It was just something to have for people who didn't want to feel like they were up to a 5K run or just wanted to participate in raising money for a good cause but still get some exercise also. Since that time, the elementary schools have been pushing a cross-country meet and we've seen a big increase in the younger children participating. As most people know, um, Murray County, as well as the South in general, has an obesity problem, and especially in childhood obesity. And we really think that that fun run, especially with the little children running in it, at least walking, getting something out, it gives them a, an avenue to show that you can have fun doing healthy activities. Well, we're partnered with Active.com, so if you search on Active.com for Southern Fried 5K or Fun Run, you'll find us in, in, in that participation. Of course, you can also get more information about it at our website. You can also, there's also a link to our registration form on the Southern Fried Festival's website as well. Is the outside of your home underwhelming in the evening from the lack of illumination? Learn how to light up the night with different types of outdoor lighting on this edition of Tennessee Home Garden and Design. Hi, I'm Kyle Bratton with Rocky Top Outdoors. Welcome to this edition of Tennessee Home Garden and Design. Today we're going to be talking about landscape lighting. Landscape lighting adds curb appeal, safety and security, and added value to your home. The three types of lighting are solar, halogen, and LED. Solar has solar panels on top that charge the battery that illuminate the lights. The pros of solar, they're cheap, you can put them anywhere, and you can buy them at most box stores. The cons, the quality is not great, you have to be in the sun, they're not very bright, and you cannot control the time they come on and off. We as a landscape company do not recommend solar for long-term use. Halogen is the second type of lighting. Halogen is the type of lighting most people are familiar with. Halogen bulbs will last three to 4,000 hours per bulb. Normally you have to change one or two times a year depending on use. 
halogen bulbs cost between five and ten dollars a bulb. With 10 fixtures running six hours a day, it costs 60 to 65 dollars a year. The pros of halogen, the soft white light that most people like, you can use a timer and they're much higher quality. The cons, they're not LED. LED lighting is the latest in lighting technology. LED bulbs will last 30 to 40,000 hours, which is roughly 15 years. LED bulbs will cost you 20 to $40 a bulb, but most of them have a five-year warranty. With 10 fixtures running six hours a day, it will cost you nine to $12 a year. Even though LED may have more of an upfront cost, with your savings on your bulb and your energy efficiency, it will pay for itself. If you have any questions about lighting or want to upgrade your lighting to LED, give us a call. 615-392-0751. Go to our website, rockytopoutdoors.com. I'm Kyle. We'll see you next time. We'll be back with more Murray County Now after this. Murray County Now is sponsored by First Farmers and Merchants Bank. Preventing wildfires. That's all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. The government's new regulations will shut down the power plants we rely on. It'll impact us in a big way. Remember how cold it got last winter? Without the power plants around here, how can we expect to keep the lights and the heat on next time? Families like ours, we need to stand up and tell the government we're concerned. Our clean energy future must include low rates and reliable power. Send your message at TakeActionTN.com. We're back with more Murray County Now on PowerNet 13. With county elections in full swing, it's hard to know where to land on the ballot. Learn some of the history of the elections on this edition of Historic Murray County. Hello, I'm Adam Southern, and this is another edition of Historic Murray County. And it's close to election day, so I hope everybody has made their minds up now. And if you haven't, I'm sure you will be swamped with a lot of political mailers. I am every day, getting tired of them. But let's look at some of the election seasons from our years past here in Murray County. Let's start out with President James K. Polk, Murray County's highest ranking elected official. Uh, James K. Polk ran for president in 1844. and. Uh, it, very different back then when you ran for president. You really didn't do a whole lot. The party did a whole lot. You didn't really go out and make a lot of speeches. People made speeches for you. You kind of stayed behind the curtain while everybody else was out singing your praises to the nation. Well, the election results start coming in that November day in 1844, and the early polls came in, and it looked like James K. Polk had lost to Henry Clay. Uh, Henry Clay and his party, the Whigs, they were going across the nation saying, who is James K. Polk? Because many people in the nation did not know him. That was their rally cry. Who is James K. Polk? Well, they found out who James K. Polk was. He became the president of the United States, but he didn't know it yet. You gotta think, this is before telephones. This is before the internet. They didn't even have a telegraph back then. So he was sitting there and uh, here in Columbia walking down the sidewalk when the results finally came in. New York was the last state to come through and whoever won the electoral votes from New York won the election and James K. Polk won by 5,000 votes there. So he carried the electoral votes, became the next president of the United States. People were Seeing him on the sidewalk here in Columbia saying, you know, we're sorry you lost, and it turns out he won. Uh, so he goes to Washington, fulfills all of his campaign promises, the only president to do so, and is ranked one of the nation's best presidents in history, and from right here in Columbia. Now let's take a look at some local things. Whiskey Alley. How do you think Whiskey Alley got its name? Well, that's where the polling places used to be really close to. 
and all the politicians and their supporters would hang out in that alleyway and give people bottles of whiskey on election day. A bottle of whiskey for a vote. So the name stuck, Whiskey Alley. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of horror stories over the years. You know, we used to be paper ballots and all these little polling places out in the country. There's stories about boxes of ballots being thrown into a creek by an opponent so the other person wouldn't win. Luckily, we're past that now, but there's a very humorous story that uh, is often told on the uh, radio station when they're counting the votes on election day. And it's about a group uh, from out in Theta. They had gone and the uh, election was over with at Theta, but they decided that they were hungry, decided to go to Shoney's and go eat before they turned the election results in. Everybody in Murray County is waiting on the results of this box. And there it was in the trunk of someone's car in the Shoney's parking lot. A county deputy was sent out to go find them, and that's where they found them. They got the results and counted them. Election day was over with. Well, this has been your look at the history of elections in Murray County. A uh, very brief one, uh, but there's so many election stories we couldn't cover them all. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please go vote. Come see me at the library. Thank you. Downtown Columbia's first app has been produced by a local Girl Scout to tell you about some of the history of the area. Here's Rebecca Moore to tell you about the app, how she did it, and where her idea came from. Hi, my name is Rebecca Moore, I'm Ambassador Girl Scout, and I just finished my goal project. It's an app about downtown Columbia. I joined Girl Scouts when I was five years old. I got into it because my mom was my sister's troop leader, so that's how I got into it, and I decided to stay in because I wanted to um, finish, go all the way through high school and finish it and I wanted to get my gold award which is the highest award in Girl Scouts is 80 hours of volunteer work. So for my final Girl Scout project I made an app of downtown Columbia. I decided to pick Columbia because I'm from here and I wanted to help people learn more about the history of Columbia. I decided to make an app so there would be easy access for people to um, learn the information. There was a, I got the idea to make an app from one of my mom's friends who's made them before. There's a free app making website and I went on that and it teaches you step by step how to make the app, how to upload pictures and upload audio and upload videos. It was difficult to upload some of the pictures because it, if your camera has too good of quality, the app will not accept the pictures at all and then you have to change the resolution of the pictures. You can find out information about the Polk Home, the First Methodist Church, the Sandwich Shop, Pig and Parsons, um, Woldridge Drugstore, Anderson Foster and Brothers, pretty much everything like around the square. Bob Duncan and Adam Southern, they helped me a lot on making the app and coming up with like the tour route and how to like find the information. And then Renee Mercer, she's the one who told me about how to make the app and helped guide me through every single step on how to make it. Um, I think people like this app because it's um, easier for them to get access to the history of Columbia where they don't have to actually come to Columbia to learn about it. They can learn about it from wherever they live. You go to http colon backslash backslash myapp dot is backslash Columbia Audio Tour. To find out more information about any of the stories you've seen on this edition of Murray County Now, check out our website at murraycountynow.com and look in the show notes for more details. Murray County Now is sponsored by First Farmers and Merchants Bank. Thanks for watching Murray County Now, and we'll see you next time.